put us to hear to spirit of destruction we come against you in the name of jesus we pray father that our minds will be focused to hear from you bless the speaker of the word lord with your wisdom knowledge and understanding in jesus name we pray amen the lord uh, could you turn down one a little bit please uh, we thank god for this day uh, this is the day that the lord has made hallelujah Amen. and we rejoice <clears throat> don't you just love it when the holy spirit moves no i'm the only one <laughs> hallelujah Amen. i just love it when the holy spirit moves and take over and does his thing hallelujah and, um, and, and believe me, there are many in here. Uh, it's not only one person or a few people. There are many people in here God has gifted. God has given you talents. Everybody in here, the Bible says so. I'm not just talking out of my own uh, volition. I'm talking what the Word of God says. God, the Bible, Word of God says God, He says the Holy Spirit, He gave to each one as according to His wills. Some were given the gift of prof prophetic, some were given the, the healing, some were given speaking in tongues and interpreting tongues. And, 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 but uh, what the Lord Jesus says in Mark chapter 16, he says, all those who believe, and there's a whole lot of things that were listed in there. He says, these things shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. So besides what the Holy Spirit gives, that's like a bonus. But already you believe. Jesus says there are certain things we are, we are going, to be, going to be doing. So what I just want to encourage you this morning is not to hold back. Don't be afraid. Some of us hold back because we, we look at what I was that person. Let me tell you, I was that person. I would not come up here to say anything because I say, what if people don't like what I said? What if people did, does not receive what I said? But then God began to work with me and begin to, uh, uh, um, you know, God begin to talk to you and begin to, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And, and so... God says you fear men more than we fear him. So if God say for you to go, you remember, uh, Ab, uh, what's his name, Jeremiah? Jeremiah, <coughs> he started having this conversation with God, and God says, listen, I know these people are, are, are hard-hearted, they are tough. Uh, I think the scripture says their foreheads are hard or something like that. But he says, don't be afraid of them. Don't let that, don't let that stop you from going to tell what I've said. If I tell you to go to tell a sinner to repent, whether he's going to receive it or not going to receive it. That's not my business. So when I'm up here on a Sunday morning and I say what God has said for me to say, it's none of my business whether you take it or you don't take it. It's not my word, it's his word, hallelujah. So if God says for you to go tell someone something and you're afraid to go, to go do that because maybe you're afraid of this person, it's on your hands. You have disobeyed God. I'm not here to shame anybody or to put somebody into guilt or whatever, but I'm just, I want, may the spirit of God convict us this morning. When God says for you to go do something, even if it was come up here and sing a song, right? How many of us know Sister Kate, Kate here is a poet? Anybody know she's a poet? No, now we know she's a poet, but we didn't know she was before. But she came up here, and she didn't have to imitate anybody. She just did it in a voice, in a way she, she, she gave it, what the Lord has given her. Hallelujah. Sister Lillian the spirit moves and the prophetic comes out and she come out and she say what she says. Hallelujah. You heard the testimonies here today. So when God say for you to go do something or God say something, don't hold back. All right? You're just a messenger. Somebody says don't shoot the messenger. You might be shot, but go anyway. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this day. Father, this is the day that you have made. We are rejoicing and we are glad. Lord, we're not looking at our deficiencies. We're not looking at our inadequacies. We're not looking at our failures. We're not looking at our weaknesses. We're not looking at our own strength. We're not looking at our capabilities. We're not looking at what we're able to do. But Father God, we're looking up to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. The one Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We are here, Father, because of you who strengthens us. We are here, Father God, because of you who loved us. The word of God says you loved us even when we were your enemies. In the book of Romans, it says when we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Father, we thank you this afternoon that, Lord, we are here because of what Christ did. We are here because of the greatest exchange on the cross. Lord Jesus, he took our place so that we may live. He died so that we may have life. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross. And we thank you for taking our place on the cross. Father, this morning as we are sitting in here, we are grateful 
for that which, that which happened on the cross. Lord, where our Lord Jesus took our place. We are here today because of that. So we are grateful for life. The word of God says, you has got the son, has got life. And who does not have the son, does not have life. We are thankful, Father, that we have the son and we have life. We are alive today because of the son. So, Father, even as we sit here this morning, we pray that your word will come forth with power. Your word will come forth with revelation. Your word will come forth, Father God, with healing. Your word will come forth with correction. It will come forth whatever, whatever you want to achieve, Lord, in this place. All we know is your word does not come back to your void. Your word will accomplish your purpose this morning. Because, Lord, your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is alive and is active. Your word is very active. And, Father, your word is going to accomplish your purpose in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. Lord, I'm just a, I'm just a vessel. Lord, do whatever you have to do in here. Say whatever you have to say in here for the glory and honor of your name. We, we take authority in this place even right now and bind all spirits of destruction. Father God, the enemy would not want us to hear this word because he knows once you hear this word, we shall be conformed into the image of the Son. So the enemy is going to try by all means to distract us. We shut down every distraction. In the name of Jesus, we shut down, Father God, even uh, wandering thoughts in the name of Jesus. Father, our thoughts are not going to wander. We are going to stay here. We are going to stay in your presence. We are going to stay focused on you. We are going to stay, uh, your word says, uh, you shall keep in perfect peace. You whose eyes stayed on you. Father, our eyes are stayed on you this afternoon because, Lord, we are here to hear from you. We are here to receive from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Father, give us this day our daily bread. In the name of Jesus. Father, the word says, whosoever shall eat of this bread shall not be hungry. And whosoever shall drink of this water shall not taste again. Father, let this word fill us so that we will not hunger after anything in this world. For there is nothing in this world that will satisfy us but you alone. You told the woman at the well. You said, if you, if you, take, if you, if you uh, take this water, you shall come back again for more. But the water I give, hallelujah, you shall never taste again. Father, this morning give us this water that we shall not, not taste again. We shall not taste after the things of this world, but rather we shall taste after you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank God for all the testimonies. Uh, and I want to thank God for what God is doing with our young people. Yeah. God is raising a young generation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, you had my wife here uh, Friday, Thursday. Uh, we were not able to be on the prayer line in the morning. And we were like, well, okay, what are we going to do? So my wife started calling the girls. She called one who was at school at uh, Endover. Uh, and she called and says, uh, you, are, you are on today. And my other, our other Zion, who was here, she says, you're on. And they have a friend. She used to come here a uh, time ago uh, when they were little. We used to bring them to church. Uh, but somewhere along the way, you know. But uh, we thank God because God, the seed was planted then. Hallelujah. These girls are on fire for Jesus. It's amazing when you listen to them. It's like, wow. <laughs> God is doing his thing. Hallelujah. So Friday, the three of them, one led the, the worship and the other one uh, led the prayer. And the other one led the, 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 the word. We're just listening and says, God, God is doing it. So the women who are coming here on Saturday, yeah. let me tell you, just continue doing what you're doing. You might not see the results immediately, but let me tell you, you are planting a seed. Hallelujah. Yeah, and whatever you are doing, let me tell you, your prayers don't expire. Mm. Okay? Your prayers do not what? Expire. <clears throat> so pray anyway. Pray, keep praying. Hallelujah. Mm. Keep praying. Your prayers are working. Your prayers are doing something. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and I just also want to thank God for uh, God, you know, God is raising people. Brother Martin, thanks for the testimony. And, and Sister Lillian, God is using you at the workplace. Hallelujah. Uh, let me tell you, uh, there's, a, there's a guy I work with. And um, when I started working, it's been two years now I've been working in, with this company. When I go to this company, I, I can't tell you how many times I wanted to quit. I just wanted to quit. You know, I was just so angry being there. And that uh, this young man just approached me and says, Michael, I think God sent you here for me. And I said, uh, God sent me here for me, you know. Uh, but anyway, needless to say, this young man is on fire for Jesus now. Uh, sometimes he calls me in the morning on our way to work, and he's got a question during the time we're on, on the Bible study. He's like, uh, Michael, I have a question about John chapter 3, verse 16. So, what does, so we get into these Bible studies, and we get to work. And, uh, and when we get to work, this, this young man is not ashamed of the gospel. So this young man literally has gathered people at the workplace so that I can share the gospel to these people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm not just there now as an as a HVAC technician, but I'm there. As a matter of fact, that is secondary. My primary, every person I'm meeting, can I pray with you today? 
<laughs> you know, because this young man, literally, he's the young man actually who I testified a, a few weeks ago who got healed uh, during the lunch break. So now it's even, now, you know, when such things happen, these people become even more bold because they've seen, like, this, this Jesus is real. So this guy is telling people at the workplace, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, gathering people, you know, at the workplace. So we thank God for what Don't be ashamed whoever you are. I used to say to a brother, Ronald, I think, and some other brother, I says, before you are a husband, you are a servant of Christ or an ambassador of Jesus. Before you are a teacher, you are... So put whatever you do, let us not separate. Let us not separate um, our Christianity with our vocation. Yes. Or, you know, I'm a teacher, so I will put Christ on the side now. You know, the Bible says, whatever you do, be it in speech or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord to the glory of God. So even when you're teaching these children, even you are teaching maths, God, touch somebody in here, even while we are teaching maths, because God is not restricted to me worshiping, lifting my hands at the workplace, hallelujah. I could just be passing by for all I know, and, and God can do something to the person you just passed by, hallelujah. So let us be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit wants to use us, God wants to use us more than we want to be used. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He wants to use us more than we want to be used. So let us not be afraid. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God this morning uh, for what God has in store for us. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to start by saying that, um, I just want to start by saying say that uh, I really, really want, want to encourage everybody in here. We are living in the last times. We are living in the last days. There are men of God I grew up least looking up to. You know, these men of God. Uh, they walk with you sometimes along the way. <coughs> and then you come to a certain place and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, what happened? This is the person I used to look up to. I used to feed on their, on their messages. Like I would listen to some of these people's messages like on repeat. And, uh, and these messages would encourage me and charge me. And now all of a sudden you look like, what happened? What, what, ha what happened? What went wrong? Yeah. So let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the Bible says that the enemy is on the prowl. And, and he's, he's, a, uh, he says he's an opportunist, right? He says, he's seeking whom he may devour. Hallelujah. <coughs> we all remember when, Jesus, when uh, the enemy tr uh, te attempt, when he tempted Jesus, right, in the wilderness. When he failed, what did he do? Did he give up? Did he quit? Did he go and resign? He the Bible says he went away and waited for what? An yeah, and waited for an opportunity, opportunity, for an opportune moment. And not long after, he shows up in Peter. Remember? Peter was a radical, like lava, and a radical, like follower of Jesus Christ. The devil shows up to Peter, and what did Jesus say? He says, get thee behind me. So the, the enemy, he doesn't care who it is. He could use your children all, you know. He could use your spouse. You could be, and then your spouse, the enemy just comes through your spouse. And, and you know, so let us be vigilant, brothers and sisters. So what I also want to say while I'm there is that I know we all listen to somebody on YouTube, these pastors who are preaching, and some of us have been listening to these people for a long time, and you know. But what I want to say this morning is, be careful who you listen to these days. The devil is also has got his pastors, he's also has got his preachers. Doesn't the Bible says he shows up as an angel of light? Yeah. yeah. So it sounds good. It sounds oh my goodness. Let me tell you, some of these people they have extra biblical revelations. They will tell you Paul was wrong. <laughs> yeah, Paul was wrong. Yeah. They'll tell you Peter was wrong to say what he said. They know more. Some of them even went, went on to say they rebuked Paul. Mm. Paul, the one who wrote the, two of the New Testament, they rebuked, they met him somewhere and rebuked him. Mm. After Paul said, you know what, I, I realized I made an error. And yet Paul is the one who says the word of God is inspired by? Right? And it's good for correction, reproof, rebuke. Hallelujah. And, and so I just want to just wanna encourage you this morning, whoever, it doesn't matter who it is you listen to, do like the Bereans did. They went in the word of God and says, where is that in the Bible? Can you show me where that is in the Bible? If it's not in here, I don't want nothing to do with it. Because these people are coming up with revelations, new revelations. They're coming up with their own revelations. And they'll tell you fornication is not seen. It, there's no way in the Bible where you find the word fornication. It's not written in the Bible, so it's okay, you can do it. Yeah, this is the pastor telling the people in the congregation, the church, yeah, it's okay to fornicate because it's not, you won't find the word fornication in the Bible. Are we together this afternoon? 
So be careful who you listen to. You know, don't just listen to somebody because this, you know, sometimes you see these shots on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Somebody comes two seconds and they say something and then you feel, wow, this is, this is powerful. And you start following these people. Please go in the background and see. You know, nowadays, social media, uh, people's social media, you can say a lot of things. Yeah? You can, see, you can learn a lot by just going on someone's Facebook page. You can learn who they are. I can be one person on Sunday, and then I'm out there <laughs> doing my thing in, in social media. And so you can go on somebody, and you can see what they, what they stand for and what they represent. Yeah? You can stand, I can come over here and say I'm the most humblest person, but you go on my Facebook page and see me <laughs> showing my six pack and everything. <laughs> yeah? And boasting about it. So let us be vigilant, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. I just feel today, uh, before we go get in the word, I just want to, I just want to give somebody, one person, an opportunity for you to tell us your salvation story, just in a, sh in a few minutes. Tell us your salvation story. How were you saved? How did you end up to be where you are today? Mm, somebody's laughing. Uh, sister, in, just quickly in a few minutes. Uh, tell us your salvation story. Um, me, I was, I was heartbroken. It was a relationship. So there was this radio back home. It's called MCF. It's for a, a certain pastor. So um, I didn't know about it. So I decided to listen to a radio. So I landed on that um, frequency. So I started listening to that man of God. It was so touching. So I was forced to go and look for his church. So I went and looked for his church. That's how I got saved. Like, so when I told my mom about it, she was like, no, I'm actually going to call for a family meeting so that we can Test you out of the family. Uh, you, you guys did Holy Communion, what, what, what. You can't just get saved like that. My follower is a priest. He's going to be a priest. So that's how staunch my mom is. So I told God, God, I can't worship you in my mother's house. Please do something. So that's how I got the opportunity of coming here. So I used to promise God, if I get out of my mother's house, I'll never be a Catholic again. So that's how I came here. When I came here, I, I gave up on being a Catholic because I used to do it for formality. So I started worshiping God like actively. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, one more, one more. <laughs> one more, Brother Scott. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I'll kind of share that with the fact that I grew up Catholic as well. And... We were there, you know, through CCD and all that, all the way through. But I never really had a connection with God, although He did show Himself to me, and I pushed Him away. Into my twenties, I, I was, I actually became a very, very good atheist, if that's such a thing. Uh, very well at argument, you know, arguing the case and everything. Um, and then all the way through, it just I didn't care one way or another. And then I met Joyce, and well, through her, I saw. God, she never pushed anything, um, but I saw how God worked in her all the way through from when I first met her and knew her before we ended up starting to date, all the way through uh, after we got married. So uh, not long after we got married, uh, I just wasn't, in a, I wasn't a good husband. I wasn't a godly husband. I, I just was lost. And of all the people that God used to speak, um, him, his word through me. Uh, my ex-brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, um, knows the Bible back and forth, doesn't, never really, doesn't live, didn't live it then anyways, um, steered me towards one day when I was crying and I, I ended up calling him, I don't know why, uh, but he led me through Psalms 51 and at that point when I read it and meditated on it, it just crushed me and that's when I gave my, my, my life to Christ and you know, it's a journey every single day. Step back, you run forward, try to step, you know, run forward. Um, but I'm blessed to be part of this this congregation. So, amen. 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 Oh, thank you for your testimonies. Sister Joyce, God bless you. So, 
all we do sometimes is just to live our Christian life. Hallelujah. Somebody says, preach the gospel, use words if necessary. Praise the Lord. Let me say that again. Preach the gospel, use words. Uh -huh. So that means your life must be preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. Then when it's necessary, you can use the words, but your life must be our lives. Uh, so we thank, we thank God for those testimonies. Um, uh, we shall continue as the time goes on. Uh, I, would, I really want us to hear everybody's salvation story. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we're going to get in the way today. Um, I'm going to touch on... Um, I'm going to use this opportunity to just touch on... Um, uh, like what I really want to talk about today is... Uh, I want to talk about things like Easter, things like Christmas, but I'm not getting into details. What, basically, what I want to talk about is the doctrines of men, okay? I want to talk, not the, the traditions of men, traditions of men, hallelujah. I want to talk about the traditions of men, hallelujah. So wh what I just want us to know before I get in this word is that um, the enemy is very cunning. Um, he's very, very cunning, so, and we all know that he's a counterfeit, right? Uh, don't look so sad. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The enemy is a counterfeit, right? Yeah. And the enemy um, is an opportunist. The enemy will not just let us worship God freely, right? Um, the enemy will not just let us worship God just like that. The enemy has to oppose everything that is of God. And the enemy's business is to corrupt everything that is of God. Yeah. And the other thing that the enemy does is to uh, pervert everything that is of God. Are we, are we, are we all here today? So um, you find that when you look at our history, even just going back in history, looking at even his, our history, right? Uh, even us as Christians, uh, I would like to believe that you all know that our, the Christian, our, the, like us as Christians or Christianity is rooted in the Jewish tradition or, you know, right? You, are, we all, do we, are we all aware of that? That, you know, our, you know Christianity is rooted, you know, is, uh, based on the Jewish uh, culture. Our Lord Jesus he was born in the, hallelujah, <laughs> to a Jewish family, right? Yeah. So, um, so over the years, um, you know, when you look at uh, even some of the, the, the amazing thing is, if you right now Google Easter, right, you see the definition about Easter and what it is all about and how it started and uh, what is all, even the word Easter itself, you never find it in the Bible. Uh, so you find who came up with that word and what is the root word of that Easter? What, what does it mean and what is the celebration behind it? When you look at um, So there are some traditions, there are some things that the, the Jews used to do from back in the day. We all know the story of Moses, how, you know, God, for instance, let us go in the book of word, uh, let go in the word of, word of God in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. Uh, we're going to touch a little bit about the Passover, hallelujah. We're going to touch a little bit about the Passover. So what it is, is um, uh, what happened when you look in the history of the church, right? When you look in the history of the church, there's so many changes that happened uh, along the way. They, uh, there are also people who came in along the way and injected some things which are not of God. For instance, they, uh, they ab absorbed some pagan rituals and cultures. They took those and incorporated them with with, um, with the word of God or with the things of God, they, they took those things and, and they, um, they, they incorporated them, okay? Do you remember Jesus at some point warning the disciples to be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees? Yeah? He, he just didn't warn just them. He is also warning us because the Pharisees, so what they did, they had their leaven that they had, right? You, do we all know what leaven is? So the... Yeah, just a little, and, and you see that if you, if you put, like, for instance, right, if you put, like, a little, uh, uh, do we have women who bake in the house, hallelujah, <laughs> what is the baking powder, what is that, what, the yeast, right, yeah, so the yeast, right, you don't need, like, a whole bottle of yeast, are we, am I right, you don't need, you just need just a little bit, just a tiny little bit, just a tiny little bit of yeast, and that yeast can cause, it can do miracles, are we together? So you had, you had a, a dough about the, my, the, the, my fist size. You put a little yeast in it, and all of a sudden, you got a, a, a loaf of bread, you know, enough to fill this house. Are we together? So, it, so Jesus was saying that 
be careful of the Pharisees or even the, the teaching, you know, what they, they will teach you. It's just, it could be just a little, just a little thing. And that thing will corrupt everything. It can deviate. Now you find yourself way, way off from where, go, where you started. You find yourself way off away from the things of God. Are we together this morning? So what I just want to say is this morning, so there are these traditions that men came up with. And some of the traditions that men came up with have enslaved people. You remember Jesus also talking to the Pharisees. He says you, what did he call them? And he says you, 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 he says a, one, there's one statement he said, he said you are not, you are not, you are not entering in the kingdom and you have blocked those who want to enter. Because these Pharisees, now they came and, 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 and imposed some very heavy rules on these, peop on, these, on these people. These people were looking for Jesus. They were looking for God. But the Pharisees came and said, if you don't do it this way, you are not finding God. And these Pharisees, they would go in the, in the, in the, in the public places, and they do these, these things, look like they were holy. And Jesus says, you are like a tombstone. He says, like, you are like a whitewashed tombstone. Huh? Nice and beautiful outside, but when you crack open a tombstone... You know, yeah. it's disgusting, right? So, so, so we find that over the, over the, this was all the doing of the enemy. This is all the doing of the enemy. So even when you look at the, at the history, when you look at the history of even the Christianity, right? And when you look at the history of celebrations, all these things that were celebrated. And let me tell you, it didn't start now. Even if you look at the, at the, at the Israelites, when God gave him instructions, this is what you shall do. And this is what you shall do. There were, there were, paper, there were some who came to, to corrupt what God had instructed them for, for them to do. There were some who came in. Do we remember the time when they built the calf? Yeah. God said you shall have no other gods. God said you shall have uh, Sister Kate. She was here last Sunday. And she shared from Exodus chapter 20. You shall not make yourself an image. But Moses just stands for a few minutes. He was gone. And then Moses coming down, they made the calf for themselves. And when you look at it, right? It looked like an Old Testament story that happened back in the day. But if you look at it today, we also have our calves. We also have our golden calves that we have. You see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to bring this to our attention to say the calf is still alive. <laughs> Although it was a golden calf, but the calf is still alive. If you look in our lives today, you'll find the golden calf. We are worshiping that golden calf. I don't know what the golden calf is in your life, in my life, but there's a golden calf. So I'm just saying, over the years, the enemy, his business is to pervert, is to corrupt. Huh? Did God say, you should not do this? No, he didn't say that. You can do that and you can get away with it. Look at David. David did it. So if David did it and got away with it, you can use the same God yesterday and forever. But you don't know the type of relationship David had with God. You don't know. Do you have the same relationship? Is your heart, are you a man or a woman after God's heart? So I cannot say David did it so I can do it and also get away with it. Bible says, wake your salvation with what? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an individual thing. It's not, ah, Moses, so I can also, because God let Moses get away with it. You don't know the type of relationship that God and Moses had. It's just like my children, right? Maybe there's, maybe there's some of my children that I'll let, I'll, I'll let them get away with certain things, and some I'll not let them get away with things. You understand me? Yeah. Maybe I might let the girls get away with something, but I'll say, Judah, <laughs> you are a man. Yeah. You're not getting away with this one here. Are we together? So we have to be careful. We don't just look at and make a template. Oh, yeah, because Peter, you know, so I can also deny Jesus three times. And Jesus will still love me. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, Janelle was here. She says Jesus <laughs> doesn't hate us. She says you never hate us. So I can say, oh, yeah, you never hate me. So I can go do whatever I want to do. Hallelujah. So may God help us this morning. So may we understand what I'm trying to say here. I'm not trying to put anyone in a corner or try to put, put any, anyone in a spot. But there comes a time in our lives when we have to separate ourselves from the profane. He says, you shall set yourself apart. If you look throughout the, the whole test, uh, I mean, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the whole theme is setting ourselves apart from the things of the world. He says, come out of, when he instructed the Israelites, when they left Egypt, he says, don't go, don't go emulate their what? Their cultures. Don't go do what they do. Don't do it. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Amen. So what does the word of God say? He says everything is permissible. But not everything is what? Yes. So just because everybody is doing it doesn't mean we also have to do what everybody is doing it. The Bible says the narrow is a what? That leads to where? 
Are we together this afternoon? Do we know the word of God? Because maybe if you don't know, that's why we're on the way we're not supposed to be. Are we together this afternoon? Do we know the word of God? <laughs> because maybe the reason why maybe we are on a way we're not supposed to be is because we don't know the word, the word of God. He says narrow is the way that leads to life. And broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. Destruction. So you ask yourself, why is everybody doing it? They also do what everybody is doing it. Yeah? I remember in uh, 20, 20, 2020, 2021, you know, during the, it was actually, COVID was like just, you know, you know, I mean, and I found myself in a situation where um, my boss put me in a corner and says, look, look, so and so is a Christian, right? So and so and so and so and so, he says, look, they've already done it. So you, you are also a Christian, right? I says, yes, I am. So he says, what, so what, what is the difference? What sets you apart from them between you? Like, you're all Christians, right? Yes, you're all Christians. I says, uh, I, I can't answer to that, that we're all Christians. Hallelujah. Because Jesus says, not everybody who says, 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 Lord, Lord, to me shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So I don't, know, I don't know what type of Christians these are, but I'm that type of Christian who doesn't do what everybody does. Not because I'm special, but the word of God says I should separate myself. He says, there should be a difference between the profane and the holy. Otherwise, there's no difference at all. Because nowadays, the line has been blurred. The line is, is blurred. Hallelujah. If you don't have the spirit of discernment, you don't have the spirit of God, you find yourself on the other side. So they put me in a corner. They say, so what? these guys are Christians. Zaira says, uh -huh, I cannot attest to that. They profess to be Christians. So they wanted to know why I was not doing what other Christians were doing. I says, I don't know about them, but I speak for myself. The word of God says everything is permissible, but not everything is profitable. Does it profit your soul? Why shall it benefit a man to gain the whole world and lose their soul? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So sometimes you ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Hallelujah. I want you to, I want you to be in that moment. Now, you see, the Berean, uh, uh, I was listening to the word of God. We, we listen to the word of God. We put the word of God on the phone, and the word of God is just, you know, the whole night. Psalm chapter 1. By the time we wake up, Revelation chapter 20, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you hear this word in your sleep. You hear, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you wake up in the morning, you're like, mm, um, I had a dream last night. <laughs> it was from the word of God. Praise the Lord. The thing is, uh, brothers and sisters, we need to be vigilant these days. Hallelujah. So I'm listening to the word of God. I'm hearing the word of God. And, 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 and he's talking about, uh, like the scripture, I just mentioned everything is permissible. But not everything is beneficial. Does it benefit your soul? Does it benefit your spirit? Does it, does it edify you? Right? Does it improve? Does it, that, does it enhance your relationship with God? Or it brings... You see, the, the book of Isaiah chapter 59, he says, the ear, the ear of God is not what? Isaiah 59, when he says, the ear of God is not deaf, he says, neither is hand short that you will not hear or is not able to intervene, but there's something. Yeah. Hallelujah. But there's something that is just, it's, it's like it's tied his hands so that he can not act as long as that is there. And you know what David said about it? He says, as long as I consider sin in my heart, you will not hear me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So the word where he says, narrow is the way that leads to life and broad is the way that leads to what? To destruction. He says, there's a way that looks right to men, but the end thereof is what? Death. Death. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We got Bible scholars in the house. Praise the Lord. It's the year of growth this year. So if we, if we don't know the word of God, this is year to know. To know. This is the year to learn. This is year to, to fall in love with the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we have to know the word of God. So the enemy is very cunning. Let me get back to our, 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 our story, right? The enemy, so over the years, is perverted. The enemy has substituted what is of God and bring his own. And it looks good. And everybody's doing it. And it feels good. Believe me, I was there. I was one of them too, feeling good about it. You know. So as you grow older, you begin to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Where does he say in the Bible you know, that we should do this? Or we shouldn't do this? Or we should say it this way? Don't just say just because the man of God said it. Hallelujah. It's, it's about time we stop following the man of God and follow the God of men. Praise the Lord. Because I'm fallible. I can come over here and tell you I, I, it's okay. You can do that. <laughs> you can do that. Hallelujah. And find yourself where? On the path of destruction. 
You cannot go to God one day and say, oh, Pastor Michael said this, it's okay, we can do that. Yeah? I, I won't be there that day. God won't cause, uh, okay, bring him, bring Pastor Michael over here. <laughs> bring him. Let's ask him, did you say it was okay for him to do this? And where, who gave you that authority to tell him that it was okay for him to do that? Hallelujah. Let the word of God be our authority. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we together this morning? Amen. Let the word of God be what guides us. Not what, what Bishop Michael, Apostle, I don't, it doesn't matter how many titles I may have. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how many theological seminars I've been to. Hallelujah. As long as it's, the, it's not in the word of God, I don't want none to do with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't care how many titles or how many robes, you know, or how many... <laughs> I don't care about all that. If it's not in there, I'm not doing it. Yeah? I'm not doing it. So let us, let, us be, let us grow to that place where we say, for the sake of my God, I am not going to do this. Not for the sake of the pastor or for my wife or for my children, but for God's sake, I am not touching this. I am not doing this. I am not going there. I'm not taking part in this. Hallelujah. The Bible says we should set ourselves apart. God gave uh, uh, in clear instructions to the children of Israel. He says, listen, on the day you shall do one, two, three, four. This is what's going to happen to you. Hallelujah. And what happened to them? They disobeyed God and they ended up in captivity. Hallelujah. So we might do these things. They might feel good now. And we don't know that along the way we are setting ourselves for captivity. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hmm? All the enemies need just a little opportunity. Just a little. What does the Bible say? Don't give him a what? Foothold. Oh, just a foothold. Uh, you, you guys know, right? Who says just put your foot in the door. Why do you? Because <laughs> you know once your foot is in the door, you can crack the door open more. Mm -hmm. hmm? I just put my foot in the door. Hmm? And then when an opportunity comes, I can crack that door until I can go through the door. Before you know, like, how did you get in here? You open the door. Yeah. The foot, <laughs> praise the Lord. So the word of God is alive, brothers and sisters. So we need to be vigilant. We need to be careful. We need to be alert and ask yourself, why is everybody doing it? Hmm? Somebody said, he said is everybody is running in one direction. You run in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah? Run in the opposite direction. Why is, ask yourself, why is everybody running in that direction? What is it that, why is everybody going there? What is happening over there? Hallelujah. Because the word of God says, wide is the way. That leads to what? It leads to death. So that statement that everybody is doing it, it doesn't apply to me. I'm not everybody. I'm a chosen generation. Hallelujah. I'm a royal priesthood. The Bible says God has set us aside to show forth his what? Praise the Lord. He set us aside to show forth his glory. So if God has set me aside to show forth his glory, my business is to do that which glorifies him. Amen. I'm not going to do that which makes me feel good. Or make me feel, make me, uh, that is not the problem these days. We want to fit in. Yeah, we want to feel. Thank God, you know, when I went, uh, when I started working with this company, everybody was throwing cast words everywhere. Yeah. But I, I say, God, <laughs> See, the word of God says, there shall be no uh, foul language that shall come out of your mouth. So if I had gone there and said, everybody, let me just, you, uh, could I turn around and say, you know what, let me tell you about Jesus. They'll be like, what? <laughs> Who Jesus is talking about? <laughs> huh? no. So you see, we have to be careful, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you. It feels good, everybody, just throwing words. You feel tempted to just also throw words. Yeah? Everybody's throwing words. So I can also throw words. I can also play with words. Yeah? But we are... I, the word of God has to conduct, has to direct me what I'm going to say, how I'm going to handle people. You know, he says everything is permissible, but is everything benefit? Does it benefit? What shall it benefit me to fit in and then lose the opportunity to tell them about Jesus? Amen. Yeah? Amen. They can say, oh, Mike is cool. Are we? Mike is cool. We, we, we hang out with Mike. It's cool. It's cool. There are people I, I meet. I, I work with now, and they see me coming. Michael, no, I don't, you don't have, I, I, you don't have to pray for me. Please don't, you don't have to, you know. I didn't say anything. I didn't say, hey, I want to pray for you. <laughs> and one of them, amazingly, right, one of them last week came to me and says, Michael, what did you do to Brian? I says, what do you mean, what did I do to Brian? We used to drink together, and we used to smoke weed, and we used to do this, but he doesn't do these things anymore. Amen. I'm by myself. He says, I'm about to quit because I got no one to drink with. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
What did he do? I says, it's not me. <laughs> he said, since he started hanging out with you, he doesn't drink anymore. He doesn't do what we used to do anymore. We don't do those things. What did he do to him? I says, don't worry. You know, God will also do to you what he did to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not me. So brothers and sisters, some things we just have to separate ourselves and say, you know what? Yeah. Everybody's doing it, but I'm not everybody. Yeah. Let's get in the word quickly. I know our time is running out, right? I just wanted to lay this down. So in the book of Exodus chapter 12, God gives instructions to the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, in the, um, what, what scriptures did I give again? 12. 12? 21. From 21. Let me start from number 18. He says, in, in, the, um, uh, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread and continue until the 21st day of the month at evening. Hallelujah. So these were the instructions God was giving. And the first month in the Jewish calendar is called the Nisan. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Nisan is the first month. And uh, that's the first month of the year, too, for the Jewish people. It's called Nisan April. This coming April, that's the first. Their calendar is different from our calendar. Hallelujah. So it says, in the first month, on the 14th day, what are you going to do? You are going to eat unleavened bread and continue until the 21st day of the month at evening. Can you imagine these days? Could you imagine these, these days? For, could you imagine us observing this and following this in this day and time? He says, on the 14th day, you shall eat unleavened bread. You know, we like bread, you know. And, and nowadays, we've got all sorts of breads. We've got all types of breads. Hallelujah. He says, on the 14th day, to, from the 14th day to the 21st day, we shall eat unleavened bread. Hallelujah. Can you imagine nowadays, you know, c- c- could you imagine these days not trying to follow this from the 14th, 14th day and with Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks and all these places, you know, market, but, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> but this, he told them, he says, on the 14th, okay, let's continue. Uh, we'll read this quickly. Seven days... No living. That means symbolic of what? Corruption. So living is what? It's a symbol of corruption. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus says, be careful of the living of the Pharisees because you'll be corrupted. You will be corrupted. And let me tell you, the Pharisees are still around. They don't walk around with the flowing gowns and everything, but they are still around, the Pharisees. They will tell you, you know what? It's okay. God, you know, is very merciful and kind and is slow to get angry and abound in mercy. Yeah, you can do it, and you, you know Moses got away with it. Yeah, so you can also do it. Hallelujah! You shall eat nothing leavened in all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread during that week. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, "Go forth, select and take a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb." Hallelujah! Kill the what? Passover. Kill the what? Passover. Mm. We all know. We remember the story of the Passover. Okay. This, you, will, you will remind us in this word. Let, let's see what it's all about. He says, uh, oh, hold on. Let me go back to 19. Seven days no living or symbolic of corruption shall be found in your houses. Whoever eats what is living shall be ex- excluded from the congregation of Israel, whether a stranger or native born. Hallelujah. You shall eat nothing living in your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread during that week. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go forth, select and take a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood in the basin, and touch the lintel above the door and the two side posts with the blood. Hallelujah. He says, And nothing, and, and none of you shall go out of his house until what morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those who sneak, up, sneak out of the house at night. <laughs> he says, Nobody shall go out until morning. For the Lord will pass through to slay the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood upon the lintel and the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to slay you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What he say in number 24, you shall observe this right for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. Hallelujah. So gave, God gave specific, specific, specific instructions. He said you shall take the blood and you shall, you know, and he also gave specific instructions on how to apply the blood. Hallelujah. Not anyhow. You don't just take the blood and do just whatever you want to do with the blood. You know, just because you saw somebody do it, so I'm, I'm just going to do the same. You know, we got a tendency to look at our neighbor and see how did they paint their door, right? Yeah? Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll be like, can you, can you get my wife, but can you get a door like the door? <laughs> yeah, you go to someone's house, you see the way they arrange the flowers. Like, can we also arrange our flowers like that? Maybe there is a ritual. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> doing it to some deity, to some god. 
So then, <laughs> somebody comes. Let me tell you, this happened in life. Somebody went and saw, oh, this is the way they arranged. Ah, you know, this is, ah, wow. <laughs> We're going to also get, they did and also took, and they went and also arranged their, these were Christians. They went and arranged their house also the way they seen their Muslim friends and arranged their whatever. So when the Muslim friends visited and they, they saw the arrangement, they says, ah, we didn't know you also pray to. Because <laughs> this is a specific instruction from their God, let's say, Molech or whatever it is. Specifically say, this is how you put it. It's going to be 11 feet down over here. And over at the top is going to be hallelujah. Amen. Are we together this morning? Yeah. <laughs> so he says, oh, I didn't know you also worship. <laughs> like, uh, I didn't know we are. <laughs> I thought you guys were Christians. <laughs> Are we together? Everything is permissible. <laughs> but yeah, praise the Lord. So he gave specific instructions because you know what? The, the pagans, they, the way they were doing these things, they were also sacrificing gods and animals and, and using blood. Yeah? So God said it, it, it has to be specific. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You don't just do what everybody does. We do it according to what God says for us to do it. So he sees the instructions. He says, you shall paint the lintel above and you shall paint on the sides. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. You don't do what your neighbor, you know. And let me tell you, even them among themselves, the Israelites, you are not supposed to look at your neighbor. Did you do it? Get the original instruction. Because maybe mine is going like this way. It's going this way. And then you look and say, oh, yeah, <laughs> Michael's was going. So I just followed his because it looked like it was good. I mean, it was, he said on the sides, right? But the side is going this way. But the side is supposed to go up, 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 you know. So let us go to the word of God. Just because Pastor Michael is doing it does not mean that's God. That's godly. That's yeah. God's instruction. Yeah? The word of God. If you see me jump here, go look in the Bible. Where does he say to jump in the presence of the Lord? <laughs> huh? He says weep. Where does he say in the Bible? Are we allowed to weep in the church? Are we allowed to dance? In? Are we allowed to clap our hands? Are we allowed to make a joyful noise? Hallelujah. And if I say we are not here, we're going to be dignified. We're not going to clap our hands and pray. Go in the word and find where he says, be dignified in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> are we together this afternoon? Yeah. We don't just do things just because everybody's doing it. Yeah. We don't just celebrate because everybody's celebrating. What are you celebrating? Yeah. She says, I didn't know you guys also celebrate. We didn't know. <laughs> I thought you guys were Christians. You also... I didn't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Brother Martin is talking about it, right? Because everybody is doing it. Because it looks cool. Because you have to fit in. Because you don't want to rub people the wrong way. Listen, Jesus was offending them every day. Read every way Jesus preached. They were offended. They wanted to kill him. Do you know what he called them one time? You brood of vipers. Yeah. Ah, let me call any. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Let me try in here. Huh? I'll get out of the, the, this place maybe through that window. <laughs> let me call somebody and name in here. Hmm? We'll be like, let me, I'm putting Christianity on the side. We're now going to do men to men. What did you call me? <laughs> I called you a brood of viper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us go to, uh, all right, let's finish this off, right? Let us go to the, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. About the condition of your church, your boasting is not good indeed. It is most unseemingly entirely out of place. Please go read the whole chapter. Do you not know that just a little leaven will ferment the whole lamp of dough? Just a little, you don't need a lot. Just a little lie. Mm. And you begin to doubt God. Huh? Just a little lie and you begin to doubt God. Just a little, ah, uh, so, and let me tell you, nowadays also, right, like I said, right, at the beginning, there are men and women of God I grew up look, looking up to. And now they've turned around and said, you know what, Christianity is a scam. Christianity is a fraud. I'm going to... I'm, I'm on now on my mission to, 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 to stop Christianity. So if I was following this man of God, you know what? I'm also now on a mission to, to stop Christianity. 
So if I meet you, I tell you you're a Christian. Oh, do you know that is a scam? Hmm? Do you know that, 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 that is a scam? Before you know it, you are also on the path to destruction. Are we together? Stuff no. So he said here, he says, about the condition of your church, your boasting is not good. It is most unsimilar, entirely out of place. Do you not know that just a little, just a little living will ferment the whole lamp of door? Let us go to number seven. Number seven. Page. Hallelujah. Clean out the whole living that you may be fresh. Oh, hallelujah. That you may be fresh, what? Fresh dough, hallelujah. So one time I, uh, I was in prayer. I was praying. And uh, do you remember the time, one of the scriptures that comes to my mind all the time, when you remember they were sitting at the, at the, out in the, in the middle of Norway, and uh, the people were hungry, and the disciples were like, Jesus, you know I mean? You know, we're out here, there's no convenience store. I don't see any 7-Eleven or uh, a Speedway, whatever, whatever. So let's send these people home so they can go feed themselves. And Jesus turned around and says, you feed them. He says, you feed them. As if Jesus didn't know they were in the middle of nowhere. As if Jesus didn't know there was no 7-Eleven or, or whatever, super uh, 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 convenience. He says, feed them. So that is always on my mind every time. When I meet somebody, I says, am I? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what Jesus also said? He says, I am the bread of life. He says, I'm the bread of life. So when I was sitting there and I was listening, it was as if Jesus was saying, you are also the bread. Hallelujah. Can somebody eat and be filled? Jesus says, feed them. Feed them. What are you going to feed them with in the middle of nowhere? What are you feeding the people you're workless with? You're either feeding them with the truth, you're feeding them with the word of God, or you're just giving them the, 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 uh, the uh, corrupted, you know, it's okay, it's all right, you know, I mean, as long as, you know, the living of the Pharisees. So he says, purge yourself of the old door, hallelujah. Still uncontaminated as you are for Christ, our Passover lamp has been sacrificed. Jesus is the Passover lamb, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, is, let us go, let us go to the uh, first Corinthians. I'm just rushing here now. But Jesus, what? He's the Passover lamb, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is the Passover lamb. He says, uh, Page, clean out uh, the, the, uh, the, the door, still uncontaminated as you are for Christ. Our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old living, nor with living of vice and malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of purity, nobility, honor, and sincerity, and unadulterated truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to finish. Do we have our, our elements? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Jesus, the sacrificial lamb. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jesus, the sacrificial lamb. Hallelujah. We are sacr the Passover. He says the Passover. You see now, uh, because what saved them back in the day was the blood of the lamb that was on the doorposts. But what saves us now is the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you see what he says? He says, do not go out. Don't go outside of the house at this particular time because the angel of death was going to come. So if you were outside of the blood, trouble. stay under the blood. Hallelujah. Stay under the blood. Hallelujah. Stay under the blood, hallelujah. We used to sing a song. It says, I'll stay under the blood of Jesus where the devil can do me no harm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll stay right under the blood where the devil can do me no harm. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the Passover lamb, hallelujah. His blood was taken and it was applied on the doorposts, hallelujah. The cross is the doorpost, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Fish of the Passover lamb, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saves us. His blood protects us. His blood cover us, uh, covers us. His blood heals us. His blood frees us. His blood, ah, I, I can go on and on and on and on and on. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, he says, uh, verse, uh, first Corinthians chapter 11, number 23 says, uh, For I received from the Lord himself that which I passed on to you. It was given to me personally. That the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was treacherous, treacherously delivered up and while his betrayal was in pro uh, progress, he took bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus, the sacrificial what? Lamb. On the 
he says, this, was, this happened on the night of the Passover. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let us go to uh, Luke chapter 22. Let us go to Luke 22. Luke 11, 22, verse number 13. And, and then, and they went and found it, just as he had said to them, he, he told them to go find a place. He said, uh, uh, and they made ready the Passover supper, hallelujah. And when the hour came, Jesus reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've earnestly and intensely desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Hallelujah. Jesus was going to fulfill the what? The Passover, the lamb, the blood. Or the, he, was, he, was, he says, I've endlessly desired because that, what, you, the, the, what you did or uh, what they did in the, in the, in the, uh, back in the day, right, Israel, when they put the blood on, on the doorpost, Jesus says he, was, he says, I'm about to fulfill that. It's about to happen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, because this, this was a shadow of what was to come. Because Jesus is a perfect, and they just didn't kill any lamp. It was a perfect, unblemished lamp. Yeah. That's what they, they killed back in the day. But now Jesus, the lamb of God, the unblemished lamb of God, is on the scene now. He says, I, I, you, 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 you won't begin to understand how I desired to eat with you this, hallelujah. Let me read this. He says, he says and, uh, and he said to them, I've earnestly and intensely desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Hallelujah. Because this is the hour, this is the time, this is the fulfillment of that which Moses did in the wilderness. Hallelujah. This is, I'm about to fulfill that. It must have been an exciting moment, hallelujah, to say it. I'm, I'm just saying this, hallelujah. We know what, 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 went, what, what, end, what, what went on. But I, I'm just thinking to myself, this must have been in a, like, he was like, hallelujah. May God open up their eyes to see that this is about to be fulfilled. That I'm about to fulfill. I'm that lamb. I'm that lamb that was, uh, they, they put the blood on the doorposts. Hallelujah. But his blood is way far much better than the blood of the lamb. Because he was the unblemished lamb. So let's see what he said here. This is Jesus himself speaking, right? He says, uh, he says and when it came, um, he says, before, For I say to you, I shall eat no more until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide this. Hallelujah. And in the book of, uh, um, um, oh, okay, let's, let's continue. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide and distribute it among yourselves. For I say to you that from now on I shall not drink of the uh, fruit of the vine at all until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this, what? In remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Amen. This was the Passover meal they were having. Yeah. And Jesus says, how I've desired to have this Passover meal with you yeah. before I suffer. Mm -hmm. He spoke the bread. He says, he broke the bread. And when he had given thanks, and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. May we receive the body today. Hallelujah. Yeah. That God made available for us. Hallelujah. The body, hallelujah, that heals us. The body that makes us whole, hallelujah. Yeah. Our bodies might be broken, hallelujah. But the body of Christ makes us whole, hallelujah. Our bodies might be riddled with sickness and disease, hallelujah. But the body of Christ, he says, my body which was broken for you, hallelujah. He said, do this in remembrance of what I did on the cross, hallelujah. Do this in remembrance of the greatest exchange, hallelujah. Yeah. On the cross, hallelujah. His body was broken so that ours may be made whole, hallelujah. This afternoon, as we partake of the bread, May you be made whole in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Everything that needs to be made whole in your life, be made whole right now. Be healed. Be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the body of Christ that was broken so that ours may be made whole. Father, we remember. We take this in remembrance of what the Lord Jesus did. We take this in remembrance of the Passover, the Passover lamb, the perfect Passover lamb, the unblemished Passover lamb that was, that was slain. Hallelujah. For our healing. That was slain for our deliverance. Was slain for our salvation. Was slain for our, 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 our peace and our joy. Yes. Father, this afternoon, we, we partake of this bread in remembrance of what our Lord Jesus did. And we're grateful. We are forever grateful. 
In the name of Jesus, let us partake of the bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number 20. And in, uh, in like manner, he took the cup after supper, saying this cup is the New Testament or New Covenant, ratified in my blood, which is shed or poured out for you. Hallelujah. He took the cup after, saying, after supper, saying this cup is the New Testament. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus, the New Testament, the New Covenant, yes. that erases all old covenants. Yes. It erases all that, uh, what that was written against us. The blood of Jesus speaks better things. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus speaks life. You see, the Bible, the Word of God says, the life of the creature is in the blood. Hallelujah. Yeah. Today, we receive life through the blood of Jesus. Yes. We receive life through the blood. Hallelujah. Yes. There is life in the blood of Jesus. Yes. So right now, let every area in your life, hallelujah, that seems dead, yes. come to life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the word of God says, you as the son has life. And Jesus says, I came to give life and give in abundance in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Father, we thank you for the blood. The blood, hallelujah. Yes. The blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. Your word says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Yes, Father, you see the blood. Yes. Even our righteousness, our filthy rags, righteousness. You look at us now, you see the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Jehovah Tsikenu, yes. the blood of Jesus makes us righteous. Yes. You look at us, you see the blood of Jesus. Yes. It covers our sins. It washes away our sins. Mm -hmm. in, in Isaiah 1.18 it says, I wash you as white as snow. Mm -hmm. So Father, even right now, as the blood of Jesus covers us, all you see is white as snow. Yes. White as snow. Yes. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood that washes us as white as snow. Hallelujah. We receive the power in the blood of Jesus. We receive healing in the blood of Jesus. We receive freedom through the blood of Jesus. We receive salvation through the blood of Jesus. This afternoon, we receive wholeness through the blood of Jesus. We receive life. Hallelujah. Let us partake of the cup. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Just take a few moments and thank God. Thank Jesus Christ for taking your place on Calvary. Let us stand to our feet this afternoon. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this afternoon. Oh, for the body of Christ, the body, the body that was broken. Hallelujah. The body that was given for us. He says, do this in remembrance of me. He says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Father, we remember what you did. Lord Jesus, we will never forget. We will never forget what you did for us on the cross. We are so grateful. We are so thankful, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We are so thankful for the blood. Oh, hallelujah. The blood that translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blood that purchased our salvation. Yes. The blood that bought us. Oh, hallelujah. The blood that trans trans translated us from death to life. Oh, the blood, the, the life of the creature is in the blood. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus translated us from death to life. Hallelujah. Yes. Because, the, because the life of the creature is in the blood. Hallelujah. So this day, Father, we are alive because you are alive. We are alive because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus gives us life. The blood of Jesus fills us with life. The blood of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, we are grateful for that covenant ratified in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And no one can undo that covenant done, signed, and sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No one can undo that covenant. Hallelujah. Father God, the covenant, the new covenant, ratified in the blood of Jesus, Hallelujah. does away with the old covenants. Hallelujah. So whatever the enemy, the accusation, and whatever the enemy had against us, the blood of Jesus, Father, cancels everything. It cancels it all, Father, in the name of Jesus. Your word says there is therefore no condemnation for those who are Christ Jesus. Yes. Those, Father God, who does not walk according to the dictates of the flesh, hallelujah, but of the spirit, hallelujah, because the, hallelujah, the spirit, the life in Christ Jesus, oh, is, is, oh, hallelujah. For the law of life in Christ Jesus has made us alive, has made us alive, hallelujah. The law of life in Christ Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the life in Christ Jesus. It has set us free from the law of sin and death. Yes. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus sets us free 
from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We are, ever so, we are forever grateful. We are forever grateful. Father, the word says, if we've been crucified with you, we shall be resurrected with you. Father, we are alive because you are alive. Your word says, if we suffer with you, we shall also reign with you. Father, we thank you. That even so, the word says, we are seated with you in the heavenly places. Yes. On the right hand of the Father, the right hand of authority, the right hand of power, the right hand of influence in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. We are so grateful for what you did for the greatest exchange. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for the greatest exchange. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that today, Father, we celebrate what we know in the name of Jesus. We celebrate that. We celebrate life. We celebrate life today in the name of Jesus. New life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We celebrate the new covenant in the name of Jesus. Ratified with your precious blood. The blood of the unblemished lamp. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you all the glory and all the honor in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Amen. Fasting tomorrow.